Hi guys, uh, here we are on the 60 at Peebles Golf Club and what I'm going to discuss is another common factor related to golf and that is one of the impact factors, that is club head speed. Uh, and I'm going to talk a, a little bit into more depth into how club head speed influences our initial, initial, direction, initial direction, initial trajectory, the distance in the golf ball and the curvature. So the four ball flight characteristics that um, impede your flight of the golf ball. So, club head speed is good. It can be, people get too fixated on it. It can be an advantage, it can be a disadvantage. So, what I'm gonna talk about are the basic principles of club head speed. So the definition of club head speed is, it's the velocity the club head is traveling on at impact. So the fastest point of impact is measured at impact, or slightly after impact, when the club's sort of at the bottom of its arc. So, what I'm going to discuss is what people get too enamoured with with club head speed. So number one, club head speed, people believe that if you hit the ball harder, it makes you increase distance, it makes you increase consistency. But club head speed can be a good thing up until, but it's a little bit, misconstru it's a little bit misconstrued sometimes. So club head speed, um, the more the harder we try and hit the ball, the more backspin and created. The more backspin we create, the more lift. So the more backspin, the higher the ball flight, the more it produces more lift. The more lift, then the high that's going to increase the highest initial trajectory, but the ball flight will create a lot of spin. So anyway, if we have a non set of contact with with a driver, so refer back to the gear effect. The gear effect is the when the club's rotating around its own centre of gravity from an, uh, resulting from an on centre strike and that is known as the gear effect. It has a desired uh, effect on the spin on the golf ball but if we try and understand the main principles of this so what I mean by that is we are trying to hit the ball harder which increases lift, increases the hit highest initial trajectory but the ball will lose speed if we hit so if we miss the middle of the club face so if we hit the, teal, the heel of the toe the big the, because we've applied so much force into the golf ball, resulting in an onset of strike, the ball will curve, curve more, resulting from a non-set of strike. So we need to get into a habit of doing that. So the, the loft, so if we mean the, the more loft we have the impact, the more spin. So if we try and hit the ball harder, we're going to try and increase the dynamic loft. So that's where we increase spin from. So but if we steepen the angle of attack, I mentioned that in my previous video about um, when we change the loft and the angle of attack, all it does is look, it dictates in this direction instead of the actual loft on the instead of the actual backspin. So, if we say we hit down on the golf ball, we are three degrees downward, and the loft's been maintained, then we will create back, we'll create much more spin. So we need to reduce the loft and the angle of attack the same amount if we want to. Hit, the, hit a lower trajectory, but to increase spin, we want to steepen the angle of attack and maintain the loft on the golf club. But anyway, basic principles of this is people try and hit the ball too hard, which makes the club face effectively, it makes the surface area of this club face smaller. So if we try and hit the ball harder, our timing has to be impeccable. We can make any compensations to hit the ball. We've got to have the perfect technique, perfect timing, and the perfect swing sequence, which for many golfers is quite hard to produce so as I was saying before so let's say we hit a golf ball at 50 miles an hour and we hit the heel right because we've hit the heel that will create a mini gear effect the mini gear effect won't create as much curvature as if you're hitting 110 miles an hour because the spin axis is actually tilted more because the spin axis is tilted more so the spin axis is a direction the ball will the ball will spin to so if my axis was tilted so if I hit 110 miles an hour, my spin axis is tilted slightly more compared to what it would be with a 50 mile an hour club head speed with a non-set of strike. So what we need to get into terms with, if, if we increase club head speed, we need to look at the, the variables that change around us. So highest initial direction, highest initial trajectory, sorry, the distance the golf ball travels. We have, we have increased in curvature because we are hitting the ball slightly harder and the impact on the club face will be much more of a collision as opposed to if you're hitting a ball slightly softer, there'll be less of a collision off the club face. So what we need to try and understand is because we are trying to change something that's 
not needing to be changed. What tends to happen is we get too enamoured by trying to focus on that club head speed. So what I would suggest is go and get, get fitted for your irons and you need to understand your club head speed because if your club head speed is inconsistent, that's where you get reduced dynamic loft impact. You might even get an increased dynamic loft impact if you're slowing down, if you're speeding up. You might get variable distances, so you might not trust the full distance that the ball goes. You might hit a 9 iron, say your average distance is 110 yards, it might go 130 yards, it might go 90 yards, depending on how you strike it. So, use club head speed as an advantage, but don't don't uh, neglect it. Don't neglect it too much. So, club head speed's not a big factor that needs worried or worked on, it's more timing and swing sequence. So, if you've got any thoughts in the video, uh, let me know. So remember, backs, the, the increased club head speed creates more lift, which increases increased backspin which creates more lift, the ball will go a lot higher, the distance will increase, but it's not so good in the wind if you play here in Scotland, it's no, I, know it's, it's no, I know it's not very windy today, but on any given day it's like 30 mile an hour winds if you play down the coast, um, and non-set strike will increase if you try the ball harder because the club face is smaller, resulting in less distance, and increased curvature. So. If we steepen the angle attack but maintain the, the loft on the golf club, that will increase the, the spin rate and it will, because if we lessen the loft the same amount as the angle attack, the ball will go slightly lower than this direction if lower. So if you've got any thoughts on the video, uh, let me know. My, subscribe to my channel at Jamie Allen Golf and follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Jamie Allen Golf. Thank you.